So today we're gonna to talk about a change in medicine that not enough people are talking about and it'll change everything on how doctors and health providers work. This idea of the non-compete ban. So in this episode, we'll break down why this is such a big deal. I'm also gonna share a story of one of my attendings who was formerly trapped in his job and why this makes such a big difference for him. So first let's get clear on exactly what we're talking about. What exactly is a non-compete agreement? So a non-compete agreement is a clause that is usually in your employment contract that prevents employees from joining or starting a competitive venture within a certain time frame or geographic area after leaving their current job. I know when I took my first job as a hospitalist, I was very careful to look at the non-compete because I knew I was considering a fellowship and specifically for the job that I took, my non-compete said that I couldn't work in the same role being a hospitalist within a nine mile radius. And I've also seen other crazy variations such as if you leave this job and for the next year, you can't work within the city. Now in the context of medicine, non-competes made sense from an employer or hospital system because you don't wanna be hiring nurses nurse practitioners, doctors, etc., and then having them leave in the midst of their contract to go work for one of your competitors, and then you kind of be left with all of the logistical nightmares of losing that provider. But as you can imagine, with any kind of role, institutions will take advantage, and they definitely have in the aspect of the medical field. The American Medical Association estimated that there's anywhere between 37 and 45 percent of doctors have unfair non-compete clauses in their contract. And to paint the picture, here are two crazy examples. During the COVID-19 pandemics, a lot of health providers including doctors, were working in very stressful environments because of the patient loads. When concerns were brought up to employers about the conditions these physicians and providers were having to work against with the patient load and the stress that came with it, a lot of employers unfortunately just threatened to activate the non-compete clauses in their contract. Which meant that, for example, if you're a provider and your contract said that within the next 6, 9, or 12 months you couldn't work in the same geographical area, that means that to leave the job you would have to move to a different area, which isn't always flexibly doable for a lot of providers. So a lot of providers, including physicians, felt stuck in bad situations knowing that leaving wasn't necessarily a viable option. As another example, when I was in residency, I worked with his attending that was a transplant doctor. And one thing that he told me is that the way his contract was structured is that because he's a transplant doctor, there are limited jobs in the United States. You have to usually work at a big academic or big center that does transplants. But his contract had a non-compete that said for the next year, he could not work within the metropolitan area that he was practicing. So imagine if you're this transplant doctor, if you don't like anything about your job. If you don't like how much you're getting paid, who you work with, if you want to leave, you can't look at the other groups in the areas or the city that you're in, even if that city is where your family may be, you have to start looking elsewhere. And this is where non-competes get very dicey, especially amongst physicians. So that's all the bad of the old non-competes, but this is officially what is changing. Now in late 2023 and early 2024, the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission started to give wind that they were considering banning non-competes. And officially on the 23rd of April of 2024, the FTC did announced that they are officially moving forward with their banning of non-compete clauses in all types of industries, including healthcare. Now, from the FTC's perspective, this ban is intended to increase competition, increase the economy, as well as avoiding putting employees in very dire situations where they're not able to move because of their non-competes. But what does this mean for medicine and health providers like physicians like myself? So let's quickly just break down the pros and some of the cons that do exist with this upcoming ban. Number one is definitely competition. If you're a provider of any sorts, for example, if you're a nurse, if you're not happy with your work conditions, or the pay and the hospital across the street is willing to give you higher pay or just better work conditions, you can leave and your non-compete is not going to prevent you from doing so. And in the same light, because non-competes will no longer be an advantage that they can use, employers and institutions will take some time, will ideally start doing things that will create a little bit more favorability, whether that's a higher salary, working better hours, more employees, whatever it may be, they will have to do things to be competitive, just like every other industry does, to make sure that their employees actually have the best job if not, they can leave if you don't create that environment for them. Number two is flexibility. This is both geographically as well as role-based. If, for example, you realize that you join a group and you are not happy with the role you're playing, not necessarily about the hours or the pay, but you want to go join another group because you want to do certain procedures, or maybe I am a cardiologist and I want to read more images instead of being in clinic all the time, and this group doesn't allow me to do that, I have the flexibility of leaving. In the same respect, maybe you want it to geographically be in the same area, but maybe you move or rent, you no longer want your non-compete to prevent you from looking for a job closer to you, you have that flexibility now. And then finally, number three is 
wellness. You never want somebody to be feeling like they're stuck in their job. This is definitely true for other fields, medicine in particular. So if people are going to stay at their jobs, ideally the conditions are being set constantly by their employers where they're trying to retain their employees instead of saying, here's your contract and here's your money, carry it with the stick, please behave. Otherwise we threaten to activate X, Y, and Z clause. So ideally over time as conditions will improve because employers will have no choice but to do so. Otherwise at the risk of their providers leaving, conditions will improve and ideally people will be in situations that they actually want to be in. And then ideally the morale of medicine will improve at least a little bit. Now on the flip side, we have to talk about some cons. The first most obvious thing is that there's going to be more turnover because there's more flexibility, but it also destabilizes the entire practice. For example, if you have 10 doctors and nurses, et cetera, providing for a group and two or three of them leave because they have better opportunities anywhere in the country and they're not compete is no longer keeping them, that is three providers that you have to now try to fill or have your other seven providers go ahead and cover their patients, which can be very demanding. So if your institution or employer doesn't do the best job of retaining employees or you're just in a job where turnover is high. For example, I worked one year as a hospitalist before starting cardiology fellowship. Turnover as a hospitalist, even with non-competes, was pretty high. People would go through their one or two year contract and then they would go ahead and give their 90 day notice before leaving for another job. Now I can only imagine how fields in primary care and internal medicine can be very destabilizing when you have doctors and providers leaving all the time. And the second con that I can think of at this moment is that employers and institutions are still very smart and savvy on how they incentivize retention. And sometimes it's not done through the best regards. So while we hope that people would just say, here are better salaries, here are better hours, here are better work conditions. Sometimes again, it's still a different carrot, different stick. So I can see people saying, well, you get a sign in bonus if you come join us, but you only get it if you stay all two or three years. And if you leave, you have to return all of that back plus some extra money. Whatever the laws may allow them to do, I can easily see other versions of employers almost trapping their employees without having a clause that specifically does so. And the final con is I do think that rural areas which already have a difficulty retaining and bringing in physicians are going to have an even difficult time as physicians are still going to have that flexibility of going to other places. So again, this non-compete ban is huge. It's going to completely change how the medical institution is done between employers and employees. It definitely has some pros of flexibility and just having employees no longer feel trapped. Ideally with it comes the improvement of competition, work conditions, and salaries, but it also will cause some struggles for patients and doctors with the turnovers as employers trying to find other ways to retain physicians and their providers. Now those are my thoughts, but I'm more interested in understanding what y'all's take is. So let me know in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts on the non-compete? What other pros and cons can you think of? Do you think it's a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Are you looking forward to it? And if you have some crazy non-compete clauses that you've had in your career, definitely let me know in the comment section down below be really interested to see what those are. And as always, if you're on the medical journey and you want all the tips that I wish somebody just said, here you go, this is what you should do and not do in medical school. I've included a free guide in the med school success handbook that I'm constantly updating currently with hundreds of tips that I wish somebody had given to me that I'm just going to give to you guys for free. I'll link that down below. If you want my entire playbook of how to succeed at every single phase of the medical journey so far that I've been through, things that again, I wish that I did and didn't do, then those are also linked down below in the med school blueprint, which has been checked out by hundreds of students just like you. But as always, my friends, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out this video right here on why I chose the field of cardiology, as well as this episode right here on my day as a life as a cardiologist. Hope you guys enjoy it. And as always, thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Hopefully today I was a little help to you guys on yours. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.